A center punch is a must-have tool, but the question is, is that $4 center punch just as good as the one that cost $50? Well, let's find out. I'll be testing 10 brands of manual punches and seven different automatics. In the first test, we'll see how the manual and automatic punches perform on mild, medium, and hard materials. We'll see which punches look as good as new, while others experience a lot of damage. If you're trying to drill a hole, the drill bit can move around quite a bit. However, a center punch is designed to make a small indentation to serve as a guide for the drill bit. At a price of $19 for four punches, or $4.75 each, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Mayhew Tools. Used for piercing or marking for starting drills in metal or other materials. Mayhew Tools is made in USA. In the first test, let's see how the center punches perform on half inch aluminum. I'll use a clamp to hold a center punch in position. I'll then drop a steel pin from right at three and a half inches. And the steel pin is pretty heavy at 6.7 pounds or 3 kilograms. The steel pin made very good contact with the Mayhew center punch. Measuring the crater diameter would be too imprecise. So instead, I'll use a dial indicator with a needle sharp tip to measure the depth of the impact. And a Mayhew's tool left a 0.0355 inch crater. No damage to the tip of the center punch. At a price of $17 for three punches, or $5.66 each, is this Wild Tool brand. It claims to be reinforced for greater strength. Meets or exceeds ANSI specifications. The punch sizes include a quarter inch, three eighths, and a half. The Wild Tool is made in USA. And the steel pin made good contact with the Wild Center Punch, and the punch experienced a small bounce. And the Wild Tool went a little deeper than the Mayhew at 0.0385 inches. No damage to the punch. At a price of $8 is this Klein Tools brand. Klein Tools claims that their ground points are heat treated to stay sharp and true longer. High carbon steel for durability and corrosion resistant black finish. The Klein Tools is made in USA. A small bounce with the Klein Tools punch but very good impact. And the Klein Tool punch performed the same as the Wild Tool at 0.0385 inches. The punch still looks as good as new. Also the price of $8, the same price as the Klein Tools, is this Williams brand. Williams claims their punch is made of heavy duty industrial grade steel. The Williams is made in USA. A small jump with the Williams and a nice solid blow. 0.0335 inches isn't quite as good as the Mayhew or the Wild Tool. No damage to the Williams. At a price of $10 is this Gear Wrench brand. Ground surface for easy identification. It claims to have a precision hardened working end. Softened and tapered striking end reduces potential to chip. The Gear Wrench is made in Taiwan. A small bounce and the Gear Wrench performed well at 0.355 inches, the same as the Mayhew Tools. No visible damage to the Gear Wrench. At a price of $14 is this Stanley Proto brand. Provides a broad dent in marking intersection center lines. Modified parabolic striking end for greater resistance to mushrooming and chipping. The Stanley Proto is made in USA. And the Proto experienced a little smaller bounce than most of the other brands. 0.0385 inches is the same as the Wild Tool in the Klein Tools. And the Proto still looks as good as new. At a price of $14 is this Stahl Wheel brand. The Stahl Wheel center punch is made in Germany. 10 millimeters by 120. And the Stahl Wheel is built like a tank and experienced the smallest bounce yet. It also made the deepest indentation at 0.0395 inches. No damage to the stall wheel. At a price of $15 is this Sterrett brand. Made of specially selected steel, hardened and tempered, offering exceptional durability and resistance to wear and tear. Round shank and knurled grip provide stability and greater control when used. The Sterrett is made in USA. Just like the stall wheel, the Sterrett experienced less bounce than most of the other brands. And a Sterrett with a needle sharp point moves into the lead at 0.041 inches. No damage to the Sterrett. At a price of $17 is this Hazard brand. The punch diameter is one millimeter, 4.72 inches in length. The Hazard is made in Germany. A very coarse grit was used to grind a tip on the hazard, and the hazard made a pretty good dent at 0.035 inches. No visible damage to the tip of the punch. At a price of $31, or about twice as much as the competition, is this Snap-on brand. The anvil end on heads of Snap-on punches are machined to a modified parabolic curve. Design directs the striking force to center of tool to allow slow metal displacement. Parabolic curve controls mushrooming to reduce chipping and splitting. The Snap-on is made in USA. Just like the gear wrench, the Snap-on is a little bit longer than most of the other brands. And the Snap-on performed better than average at 0.038 inches. No visible damage to the tip of the punch. We'll be testing seven different automatic center punches, and the first one is made by Mo work at a price of $9. Made of hardened chrome vanadium steel that holds up to high impact and provides wear resistance. Adjustable cap for different striking force. Non-slip knurled handle. Replacement tip included. Knurled finger grip to achieve easy handling and better control. The mole work is made in China. 14.8 pounds of force to deploy the punch. Aluminum is pretty soft and seems like an automatic punch might be a good choice for softer materials. And 14.3 pounds of spring force just isn't enough to make a crater as large as the manual punches. 0.016 inches is about half as deep as the manual punches. No visible damage to the mole work. At a price of $13 is this Lyle brand. The hardened tool steel tip is replaceable. Automatic firing action. Pressure can be varied by turning the knurled knob. The Lyle brand is made in USA. And the Lyle requires 16.3 pounds of downward force to deploy the punch or about 1.5 pounds more than the mole work. And the extra force did help a little. 0.017 inches. 
and the center punch looks as good as new. At a price of $15 is this Spring Tools hammerless single-ended high-speed steel center punch, specifically designed to mark ultra-hard materials. Tip can be sharpened without losing RC65 hardness. It claims to have 3,500 pounds of striking force. The Spring Tools brand is made in USA. And the Spring Tools claims 3,500 pounds of striking force, but I'm not sure how much spring tension is required to achieve that amount of force. However, the Spring Tools does hit a lot harder than the Mulwark and the Lyle with an indentation of 0.03 inches. Also, the price of $15 is this Nico brand. Spring tension adjusts for lighter heavy strokes, marking, punching, and staking. Automatic center punch has one-handed spring impact operation, no hammer needed. Extremely strong S2 steel tip holds up to hard surfaces. The Nico is made in Taiwan. I loosened up the spring tension as much as possible, and it takes 22.1 pounds of force to deploy the punch. Set to the highest tension, the Nico takes 41.9 pounds to deploy. At the highest tension setting, 0.0245 inches for the Nico, and the Nico held up just fine. At a price of $29 is this General Tools brand. Has a non-conical shaped steel tip that allows you to safely drill holes at the exact location without slipping or damaging the work surface. It claims to be manufactured of durable steel. Neural finger grip allows sturdy grip. There's no information on the packaging or the tool regarding where the General Tools is manufactured. At the lowest setting, the General Tools takes 30.2 pounds of force. On the highest setting, 47 pounds of force the most yet. Any extra spring tension helped the General Tools. 0.0255 inches. The tip of the punch looks as good as new. At a price of $35 is this Sabre Cut Extreme. The punch tip is made of S2 impact steel. The core is made of aluminum alloy steel. Designed in UK, made in Taiwan. Just under 20 pounds of force on the lowest tension setting. 44.8 pounds of force to deploy the Sabre Cut on the highest setting. And the Sabre Cut's large handle really helped make easy work of deploying the punch. 0.0295 is the best yet for this style of punch. At a price of $48 is this Sterrett brand. And the Sterrett is advertised as having a conical point, but the one I received looks very flat and blunted. The force of the blow can be adjusted when used for different materials. The Sterrett brand is made in USA. Just under 19 pounds on the lowest setting. And the Sterrett deploys at 27.3 pounds on the highest setting. And the relatively low spring force in the blunt tip really hurt the performance of the Sterrett at 0.0165 inches. Comparing just the manual punches, the Sterrett came out on top at 0. 0.0415 inches. However, Stallwell finished in a close second at 0.0395 inches. Comparing just the automatic center punches, the Spring Tools came in on top at 0.03 inches. Sabercut finished in a close second at 0.0295. Let's go ahead and move on to mild steel, which is quite a bit harder than aluminum, but still pretty soft. And the Mayhew landed a very nice blow to the mild steel and left a 0.0285 inch crater. There's still no damage to the Mayhew, but we're just getting warmed up. A blow in a couple of bounces, and the test on the mild steel ended well for the wild tool at 0.025 inches. And the wild tool punt still looks as good as new. And the Klein tool made very good contact with the test piece and left a 0.0225 crater to move into third place behind the wild tool. No visible damage to the punch. And the tip of the punch on the Williams is really sharp and that really helped. 0.026 inches is good enough to move into second place behind the Mayhew. No visible damage to the tip. And the tip of the punch on the gear wrench looks even sharper than the Williams. And the gear wrench left a pretty deep dent at 0.028 inches, which is very close to the same as the Mayhew. No visible damage to the punch. Just like the gear wrench, the tip on the Proto is ground to a very sharp point. And the Proto made even better progress than the gear wrench at 0.0295 inches to move into the lead. The tip of the punch still looks as good as new. And a star wheel is built like a tank and also has a very sharp point. And the star wheel moves into the lead with a very impressive 0.0365 inches. And the tip of the punch still looks as good as new. And the stirrup looks just as destructive as a star wheel. And the stirrup moves into second place behind the star wheel at 0.0305 inches. No visible damage to the punch. And the hazard has some pretty mean looking lines and a very sharp tip. And the hazard matched the stirrup at 0.0305 inches. And the punch still looks as good as new. And the snap on is the most expensive manual punch and it performed very well at 0.032 inches to move into second place behind the stall wheel. No visible damage to the punch. With only 15 pounds of spring force, the mole work is at a huge disadvantage. 0.015 inches is about half the indentation of the manual punches. No damage to the tip of the punch. And the Lyle delivers a little more punch than the mole work, but it's still pretty mild at 16 pounds of force. And the Lyle isn't as deep as the mole work at 0.0125 inches. No visible damage. With enough stretch on the spring tool spring, it delivers a pretty hard blow. 0.028 inches is just as good as some of the manual punches. And the tip of the punch still looks very sharp and as good as new. With about 42 pounds of spring force, the Nico delivers a lot stronger blow than the Mulwark and the Lyle. Comparing just the automatic punches, the Nico moves into second place behind the spring tools at 0.0155 inches. And there's no damage to the punch. 
and the General Tools requires quite a bit of force to deploy. And the General Tools punch left a pretty good sized dent at 0.0185 inches. No visible damage to the General Tools. And the Saber Cut also takes quite a bit of force to deploy at around 45 pounds. And the Saber Cut performed very well for an automatic punch at 0.0235 inches. The tip of the punch still looks as good as new. And the tip of the start is just too blunt and the spring pressure is too soft to be competitive against the other punches. 0.005 inches to move into last place behind the Lyle. Comparing just the manual punches, the stall wheel came out on top this time at 0.0365 inches. Snap-on finished in second at 0.032. Comparing just the automatic punches, spring tools came out on top again this time at 0.028 inches. Saber cut finished in second at 0.0235. Let's go ahead and move on to medium hardness steel. Instead of dropping the metal cylinder 3.5 inches, I'll drop it from 5 inches for added force. Even with the extra force, the crater is smaller this time at 0.022 inches. And the tip of the Mayhew does have a small flat area, but it was that way when it was new. And the wild tool handled the extra force just as well as the Mayhew tools. At 0.02 inches, the crater is almost as deep as the Mayhew's. No visible damage to the punch, and the climb tools held up just fine from the added force. And the punch performed very close to the same as the wild tool at 0.019 inches. And the punch is still in very good condition. And the Williams made a very solid hit against the medium hardness steel. And the size of the crater is very close to the same as the Klein tools at 0.0205 inches. And the punch tip still looks as good as new. And the gear wrench seems very well masked against the Williams with an almost identical size crater. 0.02 inches. The punch still looks as good as new. And the tip on the Proto looks to be about as sharp as a needle. And the Proto performed very well at 0.021 inches. No visible damage to the Proto. And there seems to be less bounce after impact with the stall wheel compared to some of the other brands. And the stall wheel moves into the lead at 0.031 inches. And the punch still looks as good as new. And the Starrett is also a very solid punch with a very sharp tip. 0.0265 inches is good enough to move into second place behind the stall wheel. And the tip still looks extremely sharp and as good as new. And the Hazard also seems to be a very solid punch and seems unfazed by the impact. The crater is 0.026 inches deep, which is better than average. No visible damage to the tip. And a Snap-on made very good use of the impact from the cylinder, leaving a second largest dent yet at 0.027 inches. And the punch still looks as good as new. And the mold work really struggled on the medium hardness steel with an extra small dent, 0.0045 inches. No damage to the punch tip. And the Lyle also left a very small dimple in the medium hardness steel. 0.0045 inches is the same as the mole work. And the spring tools probably has a lot more potential than I experienced, but 0.0195 inches is the best of the automatic punches. No damage to the tip of the punch. And the Nico performed quite a bit better than the mole work and the Lyle, but not quite as well as the spring tools at 0.012 inches. No visible damage. And the general tools offers more spring power than the Nico, and the extra force really helped. 0.0135 inches. And the tip of the punch still looks as good as new. And the saber cut has a more pointed tip than the general tools, and that really helped it leave a deep dent. 0.018 inches and there's no visible damage to the tip. And the Auto really struggled in this test and it left a very small mark on the surface of the test piece. Comparing just the manual punches, the stall wheel once again came in on top at 0.031 inches. Snap-on once again finished in second at 0.027 inches and the stare at 0.0265 for third place. Once again, the spring tools came in on top at 0.0195 inches. However, the saber cut was a close second at 0.018. In our final test, let's see how the punches hold up when they come into some very hard steel. Once again, I'll drop the metal cylinder right at 5 inches before contacting the punches. Unfortunately, the tip of the Mayhew punch experienced a lot of damage and it looks as blunt as the Starrett Automatic. And the Mayhew barely left a mark on the steel plate. Just like the Mayhew, the Wild 2 really struggled on the hard steel plate. The size of the dent is a little larger and it did experience a little less damage to the tip of the punch. And the Klein Tools punch tried to outcompete the Mayhew and the Wild Tool, but the hard steel was too much. And the size of the crater is about the same as the Wild Tool's dent. And there's quite a bit of damage to the Klein Tools punch. Once again, the Williams punch made very solid impact with the steel plate and made the biggest dent yet at 0.014 inches. No visible damage to the tip of the punch. And the gear wrench also delivered a really hard blow to the steel plate. And the gear wrench made a little more progress at 0.0175 inches. And the punch tip still looks as good as new. And the Proto has performed very well up until now, but the steel plate is just way too hard. It did leave a very small dent, however, it experienced quite a bit of damage. And once again, the stall wheel plowed into the steel plate with a very solid blow. And the stall wheel made the deepest dent yet at 0.03 inches. Very impressive. And the tip of the punch still looks as good as new. And the Starrett seems just as motivated to make a dent as a stall wheel. And the Starrett moves into second place at 0.026 inches. 
The tip of the punch is very sharp and still looks new. And the hazard has what it takes to make a dent in the hard steel. However, the crater isn't as deep as the stall wheel and the stair at 0.026 inches. The punch tip held up very well and it looks as good as new. And the stamp on has performed very well throughout the showdown and it performed very well on this hard steel at 0.0285 inches. No visible damage to the tip of the snap on. And the mole work barely left a mark on the hard steel plate. The mole work makes a very soft swing and it probably prevented damage to the tip. Just like the mole work, the Lyle made a very very small mark on the steel plate. No visible damage to the tip of the punch. And the Spring Tools claims that this tip is designed for hard metals and it's done the best of the automatic punches yet. There's also a small amount of damage to the tip of the punch. And the Nico took a swing but it came up short of the Spring Tools at 0.0075 inches. And there's a very small amount of damage to the tip. And the General Tools made a little harder punch than the Nico and it made a little bigger dent at 0.0105 inches. And the Saber Cut has outperformed the General Tools up until this point but the hard steel really held back the Saber Cut. 0.0095 inches. And the Sterrett Auto took a swing, but the hard steel plate barely took notice. Unfortunately, it looks like the hard steel caused the tip to become a little more blunt. None of the punches experienced mushrooming from impact. If you're looking for a manual punch that can handle coming into contact with hard steel, the stall wheel made the biggest dent. However, several of the other brands also performed almost as well. Comparing just the automatic punches, the spring tools once again came out on top. Assessing durability is highly subjective, but about half the brands receive the best possible rating of 1, indicating no visible damage. That's pretty impressive considering the hardness of the steel plate. The hardness of the blow delivered by automatic punches varied by quite a bit. So not surprisingly, the punches that took the hardest swing also experienced the most damage. So which punch is the best? And a stall wheel came out on top with an average finish of 1.2. Snap-on and stare tied for second place with an average finish of 2.2. For the automatic center punches, the spring tools came out on top, finishing in first place in every category except for damage. I remove that category for this assessment since it doesn't seem logical to penalize harder hitting tools for experiencing greater damage. Sabercut finished in second and General Tools third. A big thank you to everyone that requested a review of Center Punches. I'm always looking forward to new video ideas, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.